was last in my class. Your theories are the worst kind of popular tripe. Your methods are sloppy and your conclusions are highly questionable. All right, everybody. Good evening. Dr. Incompetent here. I'm going to pick up where I left off with my dungeon crawl stone soup playthrough. Now, I kind of want to stipulate that this is a playthrough for either entirely new players or people who are at the beginning phase of the game. Um, I'm going to make stuff for more intermediate, medium level players like myself. Uh, but for now, I just kind of wanted to I refresh myself with the game because I haven't played um, in several iterations probably well that's not, maybe that's not true but it's been I would say six months since I booted up a character so I'm reacclimating myself to the game and I wanted to provide an entry point for other people because there's such a high difficulty curve now here I am with my character and um, I want to just point out immediately uh, if you can see here there's one, two, three, four enemies that I can see in this giant chamber. Now, I don't want to be getting hit by all of these guys at once, or I will most likely lose. I could survive, but um, there's no point risking it, so I'm going to uh, step back up through this hallway, and these guys will keep chasing me. They know I'm here. They won't, like, de-aggro... Um, unless I run really far away or go up the steps or something like that. Um, and that's actually your best escape method is to um, run away, is to head for the hills and uh, <laughs> go up the steps. Because if you're having problems um, running, there's just no shame in it. All right, so I'm going to step back and let these guys come to me. I'll throw a dart at this guy, try to hit him, throw a dart, miss, splash him everywhere, blood just flying on the ground. Oh, he's got a sling or something. Okay, so he hit me from far away. That's cool though, I will take that sling. Now, um, let me explain a little bit of what's going on. I have auto pickup turned on, which is just on by default. Um, and that means that if there's something, certain types of items will just get automatically picked up. So I stepped over this scroll right here, for example, and they just picked it up for me. It's a scroll, I don't know what it does. It's unidentified, um, but I got it. Now, these things it did not pick up. These are on the ground at my feet. Uh, we've got two goblin corpses. So even though there's items I can't butcher, I'm just going to push the C key, and it automatically knows, like, oh, you want to butcher, you know, one of these corpses. Um, and then you just push uh, C again, and you chop them all up. And then you are, they have these skeletons that you're left here with, which is silly. Uh, and then there is this cursed minus three dagger. You see the red box around the icons. That means that they are cursed, um, and luckily we know that already. I... I would be excited about that sling, except it's cursed, but this one is not. Now, you can use um, stones as bullets in slings. Um, so, if I equip this sling as my primary weapon, it automatically quivers the stones, and then if I want push F to fire it, I will shoot the stone with my sling. And, um, let me right click on the sling to explain it. Um, it it's used for launching stones, all right? So it gives a base damage of nine with firing bullets and it gives you an accuracy bonus um, and a base damage. So what's cool about that is um, if I look at stones, like stones are just base damage too. But if I'm launching them with the sling, they become incredibly more potent. So it's always in your best interest to get a sling if you can. The only downside, and something you have to be careful of, is it does occupy your weapon slot. So you have to change over to a mace, um, and then switch over to your sling if you want. Um, now you can press W, like the 
which is the wield key to just kind of switch like, oh, I want to use my mace. And again, you can use the mouse to select one or the other, your mace or your hunting sling. Um, or you can use this hotkey J or A. Actually, um, I'm going to select my sling right now. That's fine. Um, give me one second. What I want to do is um, adjust uh, some things here. So I am obviously not playing Might and Magic 3. I am playing Dungeon Crawl. So let me put the proper artwork up on the stream. And then if you don't mind bearing with me for just a moment, um, I'm going to... Uh, change my stream title so that people know that I'm not playing Might Magic 3 anymore. I'm actually going to play Dungeon Crawl. I stream both games at the moment, kind of hopping back and forth to keep myself fresh and, you know, just because uh, reach different audiences, and I think they're both fun. But I am not streaming Might and Magic at the moment, so let me change that game in the description below. Uh. Oh boy. Now just just give me a second here. I need a bit of I will have to trim this out of YouTube I apologize um, <laughs> I'm so bad at this um, I need to figure out how to quickly change um, my game title here we go Okay, I apologize, I'm so bad. Um, it's just taking me a moment. <laughs> okay, uh, there. Anyway, here we are, we're back. Okay, so, um, again, all of my like ranged items that I threw are lying around. I'm gonna push five to rest. Uh, and heal up and then now um, I'm just gonna push O again to auto explore I run around and I stopped because you can see here in the description a rat comes into view um, so that means that this guy is here now because I've got my sling equipped um, I'm just going to push F and um, I'm gonna push tab to target him and F again and I launched it Ooh, here's bad guys all right now, this is a great example. Um, I tried to just swing at this dude, and he is uh, <laughs> in melee range, and I'm using a sling. So it's like, hey, do you really want to attack while using your sling? I'm like, oh, you know what? I don't. So um, I say no, capital N, and then I'm just gonna click on my mace. now. Um, I was able to do that pretty quickly without them getting an attack on me, but I think some quicker monsters might be able to attack you in the interlude of switching. Now, this is a great time to actually switch to my sling. Um, I'm just going to push F. It targets him automatically, and push F again to just launch slings. Uh, bullets with my sling, I should say. And as you can see, a worm, which can be a pain in the butt at the early levels because they're so... 
they have a high damage output, you know, sort of, anyway. For me, they're hard. They have a lot of hit points. Um, but the sling, because they're so slow, it takes them forever to cross ground and get towards you. Um, I don't have to worry about it. So, um, I'm going to then pick up these. Oh, man, they're really um, giving me a lot of throwing things. These items here are javelins. Um, anyway, I'm going to switch to my um, mace. Now, here's an example of a faster enemy. You see here that I switched to my mace, and the adder got to attack me, the snake, while I was switching. So this is kind of one of the reasons why you don't want to um, necessarily be using a ranged weapon um, and letting them get close. What you want to do is probably blast, blast, and then when they're a square away, switch weapons. This won't protect you from all enemies um, if they're really fast and if you're really slow, but it's a best practice to at least mitigate some of the free attacks that they get. Now these javelins are good. Um, for throwing, look, you can see that their base damage 10, and actually does more damage than my sling. Um, and so I'm going to push G to pick these up, and then I'm going to change what's actually in my quiver um, by using capital Q, and I'm going to select these javelins, and I'm going to rest. And the cool things about, um, I'm resting, by the way, to cure my poison. You saw that I had that, like, uh green teardrop by my character that means i'm poisoned which i'm taking damage over time and that's your worst enemy for no matter who you are you don't want that happening um so i just rest and, and it wears off eventually um but the cool thing about having javelins quivered is that i can throw them but i can still have my mace equipped so i don't have to bother switching now i did pick up this scroll earlier all right now i will tell you that the reason i'm not using it um, is because I don't have anything to use it for right now. I could just use it to identify it, but then that uses it up, um, and I don't necessarily need that effect at the moment. And here's an example of why that's the case. It could be a situation where I'm like, oh crap, this guy is going to kill me, and I need an escape method. If I read this scroll, it could be a teleport scroll or a blink scroll, something that would let me get away. And so I want to save it just in case, all right? Um, also, scrolls can be bad. They can hurt you. Um, they can do things that you don't want to do. And so I don't want to use it for that reason. It could be like a scroll of torment or immolate or something like that. The other thing is I might want to save this because I could get cursed and be in a situation where it's like life or death, I need to de-equip this item. Um, say, for example, I have my sling out because I'm shooting my rocks, and then somebody comes into melee with me, but my sling has been cursed. I can't take it off unless I uncurse it. So I need a scroll of remove curse. So this could be that. So I might need to use that. I'm going to drop this animal skin, by the way. I'm never going to wear that again. All right. So I'm keeping the scroll. I'm not using it until I have to have it. Another reason, uh, I'm throwing these javelins and I'm not doing well, but then I just killed that guy. See? Just instant kill. Now, um, I can't, again, eat kobolds because their flesh is inedible for me. You'll see that I went back up to six javelins. Uh, most ranged weapons have a chance of breaking when you use them. Like, you can't recover the ammo, but a lot of the time you can. I think... At least in later versions, the higher your skill was, the better you were at not breaking stuff and recovering it, maybe. Or if they were magical, they had less of a chance of breaking. I'm not 100% sure on that because, um, for me, ranged weapons are just kind of an early game band-aid or stopgap until I become really powerful. Now, um, let's talk about this. Something has just happened, which is very dungeon crawl and what do i mean by very dungeon crawl i mean that a named enemy is already approaching me named enemies if they have a name in all white above them they're unique if you're curious as to their stats go to the crawl wiki search for them and you can get an idea of who they are generally they're just bad news now if i right click on this dude 
It'll tell me that Terence the Incautious <laughs> is a violent murderer who kills for both pleasure and profit. Not good. Terence has been forced into hiding after a botched job. Wow, so he chose to come into Zot's place. That's probably a bad decision. There's a price on his head and he can't afford to leave anyone who sees him alive. So he's just going to kill me. Um, or try to. It's kill or be killed. All right. It's um, two men enter, one men leave kind of scenario. Now, um, I'm going to get sweaty against this dude. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to definitely pick a fight with him. Um, and the reason is he's got good stuff. Okay, so let's first just read all the information, process this. About 20 hit points is where he's at. Remember before, um, when I was showing you this, the enemy that we were looking at only had a plus one in each of these categories, but Terrence has like a little bit better armor class. He's got two on this scale. He's got two evasion. He looks dangerous. So that's like the game's assessment of his ability versus mine. He's intelligent, um, which means like he's immune to, he has a high resist against certain things. He could cast a spell on me maybe, but he's not going to. Um, and he can hit for up to 5 damage plus his Morningstar. So that means 5 damage plus his Morningstar. And a Morningstar is high base damage. So I have 35 hit points, but that's still pretty scary. Um, now. Okay, so here's the cool like little quote that describes him. Anyway. Um, additionally, you can see here in red... On site, here's what I see. It's Terrence. He's got a plus zero Morning Star, which I want to kill him and take that Morning Star badly. And he's wearing plus four scale mail of fire resistance. That's a very good set of armor for me right now. I have this, you know, crappy ring mail. I would much rather upgrade to that scale mail and get fire resistance um, to boot. So you might say, well, he looks dangerous. He's got way better equipment than you do, um, and he's a trained killer. Okay, and I say, yes, you're right. Now, what I'm doing is I'm walking Terrence back to this area uh, so I can get a safe corridor. And I, what I want to do is go someplace that's explored. I don't really want to go up into this corridor because you see how it's black. It's not explored. There could be somebody hiding in there, and I don't want any extra enemies right now. I just want Terrence. I might not even be able to take Terrence. I mean, I, I am only level four and this is dungeon level two but uh, oh and by the way before i'm i leveled up um here let me see if i can go up so if you left click on the um text box here you get this like this game is so good it just keeps track of everything that's happened to me since i entered the game okay um so I could scroll through this just to see everything, you know, see like what the hell happened? Oh, this is what happened. And so you can go back and review things. Now, um, I did level up to level four and it says I feel agile, which means my um, dexterity went up by one. So I got some hit points. Um, I got some other, I got another magic point. My magic resistance may have increased and my dex went up. So that's what happened. So I'm a little bit stronger. Anyway, I'm um, pushing escape to get out of that. Terrence is coming. Okay, so I'm going to put myself in a spot that's the most friendly for me to throw as many lances as I can. Now, you see, um, I threw that javelin, and Terrence was able to, like, cover two grounds of space in that time. Now, I threw another one that I missed, and he's almost on me. Um, I am going to go berserk right now. Um, because it takes a turn, and so if I go Berserk right now, then Terrence is going to move forward one square and be in range, and I can hit him. If I wait to go Berserk until Terrence is on me, he's going to get a swing at me for free while I, you know, rip off my shirt and become the Incredible Hulk, basically, so I don't want that to happen. Now, I know I've explained before that I don't like to go Berserk unless um, I feel like it's an emergency. This is an emergency. And it might not be, but using Berserk early and in a situation where 
Um, I can escape if I have to, I guess, is a best practice in my mind. Um, because what this does is it lets the fight not get out of hand. Now I also, because I've you know been killing stuff, Trog is happier with me. And I've gone up to two um, in my piety. And what has that done for me? If I click A for the abilities key, you'll see that I have Trog's hand. Um, and I would like to um, show you what this does. So if I click question mark to switch over to the description, it says Trog's hand invokes a powerful regeneration ability which stacks with all other sources and is effective even on those who would not otherwise be able to regenerate. While active, the user will also be granted significant protection from hostile enchantments. Okay, so um, this gives you like a little bit of regeneration, which is kind of like some nice healing and protection from hostile enchantments, which is basically like terrifying magical abilities that some enemies have. Now, this tells you what this costs me cost me a lot of hunger so it's going to make me really hungry to use it and a little bit of piety which means that every time i use this this piety which is built up starts to creep down now these don't indicate one for one it's just a range um but i don't really want to use this right now now for example um berserk um it makes me really hungry but it costs no piety i can use this all the time as long as i'm with trog and i'm not hungry and i'm not suffering from um you went berserk too recently and you're slow that kind of stuff so anyway i'm gonna go berserk now you see i am berserk i'm hungry um but what has happened i've gotten plus five strength and my hit points have gone from 35 to 52 so now terence is here and i'm gonna fight him i swing at him i hit him and he missed me um now i hit him and he's severely wounded i thumped him whenever they give you like a good adjective like a thump or something that means you really you know put it put a good tag onto the man Terrence is almost dead I socked him Ooh, Terrence drank a potion and he healed himself that kind of sucks because I think I would have got that potion um, if he didn't drink it but whatever that takes a turn now we just killed Terrence which is immense for many reasons killing named enemies gets you a lot of experience um, and you see that my maces and flail scale uh, just went up to four when I did that. Um, so that's very good, right? If I go to push M, you'll see that my skills are here. Uh, and this tells you what level your skills are at. So like I'm at 4.1 actually. My fighting is 3.6 and my armor is 2.7, which means they're almost about to level up to three and four respectively. That's fantastic. Now, um, I'm hungry, and I'm berserk. I'm going to eat um, one of these chunks of flesh. Um, the raw the raw flesh tastes terrible. Yeah, um, I can only imagine what eating a raw goblin would taste like, uh, but it doesn't matter. Um, all I have to do is imagine it. I don't have to do it. Um, but now I'm not hungry. My guy is still berserk. I'm going to just wait. So I'm going to push five. Um, and you see it says you feel a strong urge to attack something down here in the text window. Um, meaning that sometimes if you are like fighting a bunch of things, your berserk, if you kill stuff and they're fighting, will take a little bit longer to wear off, which is very helpful. But right now there's nobody for me to kill. So my berserk is about to, I'm about to calm down basically. I calm down. Um, and now I'm exhausted and I can't go berserk anymore. So I'm going to actually wait again. Um, now I'm no longer slow, and I'm going to push 5 and wait again, and now um, I recovered from my Berserk Rage. The reason I do that is if something happens and somebody comes in, um, I can go Berserk again, right? Now I'm going to go over to him and pick up his stuff. I'm going to chop up his body, and I'm going to take his armor and his Morning Star, Okay. Another reason why I'm just kind of like mentioning these things all at once. This game has so much information, so many things to digest, which is why I'm producing this content to like hopefully help ease you into the game and make the difficulty curve not so prohibitive. Um, but anyway, 
Another reason not to use this scroll is it could be a scroll of enchant weapon or armor. And you wanna make sure that you actually have something to use that on before you use it because unless they've changed it, it, it makes you use it. And so you're gonna to have to waste it on some item that you don't, that you're going to upgrade really soon anyway. Um, but anyway, I'm going to then show you what a morning star is. All right, so a morning star is a mace with a head covered in short spikes. You probably knew this, but here's the good stuff. Its base accuracy is minus two, which is actually quite bad. It makes it, makes it harder to hit but it makes up for that in spades with the fact that its base damage is 13. Now let me just um, show you. Uh, I'll, I'll compare them in a second, but look, the game also provides this extra tooltip stuff, which is awesome, which is that uh, my skill, 4.1, um, It, it, it's going to take me this long to get to level 16 and which what that would do is that would increase the base attack delay of this weapon from 1.5 all the way down to 0.7 and your base attack delay is basically your speed with which to attack with the weapon and so sometimes if you're way faster than somebody you can get in several hits before they can even get in another because they have a really bad base attack delay right now if i equip this because my skill is only 4.1 i'm going to need i'm going to be really slow um, but again, all of that is okay because of the base damage. Look at this mace, for example. It's base damage 8, okay? Um, and its base attack delay is not much better than the Morning Star. It's 1.4 versus 1.5. So I'm going to just hop over to equip this. You'll see that it changed. It got a little bigger. I'm doing way more damage. Um, DVD. Now I'm going to push the. Um, if you push Shift 5 to like use the percent key, it opens up this cool little screen for yourself that gives you all kinds of information. So is your fire resistance, all your resistances, what you have equipped in each slot on your paper doll, what god you are, spell slots you have, your experience level, how far to the next level, all kinds of cool stuff. I have no status effects at the moment, and I have no striking features, uh, like a mutation or something. But now I'm going to um, show you that my armor class right now is 8, and my evade is 11. I'm going to take off this um, ring mail. My evade goes up 1. Now I'm going to equip this scale mail of fire resistance, okay? So my armor class goes all the way up to 13 because its scale mail is terrific, all right? It's base armor 6 versus base armor 5, all right? Um, so that's an upgrade, but this is plus four scale mail. This is a ridiculous find at this point in the game. Um, it's not plate mail, which is kind of too bad, but at the same time, I would um, be horrible in combat if I had plate mail on because I'm not trained enough in armor. So, like, you would see this message appear all the time that says, your plate mail prevents you from attacking because basically... You can't move because you have this big suit of metal on you and you're not trained in it. Um, and the scale mail will not do that. Um, I don't think at all, or at least much less frequently. Now, what this means for me is I've got a really good mace and I've got really good armor. So I'm actually going to go to my skills and I'm going to turn off fighting. I'm just going to click on it a couple of times until it's grayed out. And so now the only skills that I'm leveling up are maces and armor. And I'm doubling up on maces. Um, because these pieces of loot that I've gotten are so good that I want to emphasize these strengths and level up my character to reflect that. All right, now I'm just going to go ahead and push zero. And I'm going to, you know, throw my stuff at this guy. Bash him. All right. Um, the frilled lizard missed me. He bit me. He hit me for two. I'm just going to push tab a few times. Mm -mm. I'm missing a lot because of the minus to hit. Um, and that's a shame. But like I said, you won't regret it. Maybe on a really quick enemy, like some stupid bat or something, you're going to want to switch over to the more accurate weapon. But I don't want to do that right now. Now, I got a scroll of Identify. And recall, because I used this scroll before, um, 
I know what it is, so when I pick it up, I can see immediately it's a scroll of identify. If I was being really wasteful, I could use this scroll to identify this scroll, um, but I'm not in the mood to do that. I don't, there's no reason for me to do that. If I had like some insane surplus of identify scrolls, if I had like 50 of them, maybe, but you don't really ever get 50 until way late in the game, and even then, it doesn't seem worthwhile. All right, I'm gonna throw some stuff at this hobgoblin, and then we killed him. When you're auto-exploring, by the way, too, the game will just um, automatically run over and try to pick up any dropped um, munitions that you have. Like, all of these green, these javelins that I'm throwing and they're landing on the floor with the green box means like, hey, these are yours, do you want to go get them? Um, and the game will automatically go get them for me when I auto-explore. Unless I tell it not to. If I tell it to, like, ignore them or something. But I don't want it to ignore them. They're good. I want them. Alright. Good, good, good. Okay, so I just picked up a grape. And, yep, it just went into my bread slot. So I'm still, like, trying to get used to the fact that, uh... All the rations stack on the same thing. Now, here's another piece of information for you. Um... This is a temple. You can see here it says, found the blossoming altar of Fedhas at the big bottom of the screen. Um, this is um, an altar. And what you can do at an altar is you can push like the, the down stair key, the down, the right carrot. Um, and it won't do anything unless you commit. It'll let you kneel at it and then kind of see what you would get. Like, what are you getting into? If the god's name is in blue like this, it means it's a good god, okay? That really only matters in terms of, like, if you have a role-playing decision because you want to play only good gods, or if you're, like, switching from an evil god to a good god, or fighting a good-aligned creature, um, or uh, certain gods have different, like, things that piss them off or make them happy, and they're usually aligned with you know whether or not they're good or evil okay this is the god of fungal life um blah 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 i'm not really going to go through this too much i'm just going to say this about religion when you get the screen you can look through it and you can get a sense of like what will i get if i progress these are the powers that you get as you progress through your piety right so it's like at level one perhaps level two and on you um start to unlock these abilities as long as you have the piety okay now the other thing you can do is you can right click to get like a description and then if you right click again it'll tell you um, all of the things that this guy hates and what happens if you decide to leave him or you really piss him off so it gives you all of the information um, and here it'll show you you're on the power screen, you're on the wrath screen, you're on the overview screen, whatever. Um, what I suggest is look through this. Your first few times it's not going to be a major deal. Um, but as you acclimate, you'll find gods that better fit your play style. Some are definitely better than others. Um, but go to the wiki. Go to the Dungeon Crawl Reddit. Check out what people are saying about each god for, you know, each circumstance, each race, each class, uh, each point during the game, each play style, you know, and you can get a better feel for it. When you first start out, I would almost just say take any god that you can get access to early. It's only if you have a decision, like if you find the ecumenical temple and you have a big decision to make, that you should... Um, really hesitate and, and make a good choice. At this point, like, all this gives you is a benefit, so it's nice to find an altar on a second level of dungeon. It doesn't really happen that often. Um, so why not take it? However, I'm already with a god, and I don't want to leave Trog. Trog, in my opinion, suits my playstyle. It's way better than this dude. And if I did leave Trog, he would get pissed, and he would do bad stuff to me, so I'm not gonna go there. I don't want that to happen to me. So, I'm going to skip that. I'm going to push O to auto-explore and run around. And so, it says down at the bottom there that I am uh, done exploring. 
And so when you're done exploring, it's time to go down the steps. So I'm going to push Shift X to um, search the dungeon, and I'm going to push Shift Right Carrot to find a staircase. Again, it'll find the closest down staircase to you, and you can see that like it's told me with that box that um, the asterisk means I've never gone down that staircase before. And so I'm going to go down it. I'm going to go down. Okay, and immediately I come into a, a large open chamber. So what you want to do whenever you go down the steps is take a look at what's around you. Survey um, the enemies that you can see. Do not get distracted by the fact that I see like a ring, for example, a magical ring. That is badass. There's a potion there, also badass. But the game will tell you in red, a quokka and a giant cockroach come into view. So there's this big bug down here. Again, you can mouse over him and tooltip information will appear in the text box in the bottom to tell you like some information about this dude. Or you can just right click on them to get uh, more info if you wish. Um, and it'll, they're both harmless. So that helps me like evaluate how strong they are. Now, here's what I'm gonna do. Um, I don't wanna go fight them right now because I haven't explored. I don't know what's over here. So I could go over here and then there's some really hard enemy that I don't wanna have anything to do with who comes into battle with me. Dungeon Crawl is all about being extremely careful because you will die all the time. You don't need to make it any harder on yourself. So I'm just pushing the S key and what that does is wait in place and it allows these enemies to approach me. Now. The Quokka has approached me. If I felt that this guy was actually really hard, what I would do is I would go up the stairs and he would come with me. He would get a free hit on me, but then the cockroach wouldn't come up and I could take this guy on one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but in this situation, I'm not afraid of this guy, so I'm gonna swing at him um, and I've killed him. Now the cockroach is in combat with me um, and he tried to hit me, but he missed. I'm gonna hit him and boom, we just blew these guys up, okay? So we will chop them up so that we can eat them if we want. Now we're gonna be very, very careful um, and go up here and I'm gonna get this ring, okay? So I've got a ring and what I wanna do is identify this ring. So I'm gonna click on my scroll of identify, all right? And when you do that, it opens up this box and it tells you, hey, what do you wanna cast this identify on? And it gives you options. I have two unidentified scrolls and I have this ring. Right now, I wanna see what the hell this ring does, right? So I'm gonna click on it and it tells me it's an uncursed ring of resist corrosion. I can right click on this to get more information about it. Um, it gives you cool flavor text. It gives you um, a full breakdown of what this does. It provides partial protection from acid and corrosion. So that's good. It's not necessarily the best thing in the world, but why the hell not wear this, all right? So I'm gonna click it and wear it. You can wear two rings in this game, okay? Um, and if I show you my paper doll by going to shift per, uh, percentage, uh, you can see my ring here. And I have now one out of one resist corrosion. This is the max resist corrosion you can get. Uh, there's no more levels of it. I have one resist fire from my armor here, and you can actually get up to three levels of resist fire, resist cold, and resist negative energy. Uh, and the higher you are, the less damage you take from that source. It never nullifies the damage completely, but it can get to the point where low level people can't even hurt you with that particular damage type, which is very useful. Now I'm gonna go pick up this potion. Now it's an emerald potion, okay. I'm gonna tell you, you can identify a potion just like you can identify a scroll by using it. I could just quaff this potion if I wanted to, but again, I'm not going to do that because that doesn't have very much upside for me right now. It's only if I got into a situation where I was about to lose the game and I and I just had to be risk it, be like, I sure as hell hope this is a heal wounds potion and I'm gonna drink this to see if it heals me. Um, but it could be a potion of poison. It could be a potion of something bad that I don't want to have happen right now. So I'm not going to drink it unless it's an emergency. I could use my identify scroll on it, but I want to save this for something else, okay? Um, I also have all these scrolls, and right now I don't feel like using them. I'm going to save them too. Okay, 
So I'm pushing O to explore, and we see a snake, all right? A snake um, is a pain in the ass. I have my javelins quivered. I'm going to try to hit it. Wow, I got really lucky. Snakes are usually really hard to hit. They're very agile, have high evade, uh, and I suck with throwing. Again, if I wanted to get good at throwing, I could push M to open up all of the skills, and I could select throwing and start spending my experience as I earn it at getting better at throwing. But for right now, I'm just throwing because I can, but I'm not too worried about it, okay? Um, I'm gonna just keep whacking at this guy, and I killed him, all right? Remember that when you're fighting in melee, you can push tab just to auto attack the closest enemy to you, or you can push to move in that direction to attack where you can use your mouse, all right? I'm going to auto explore, picking up my javelins. Here's a bunch of arrows, I don't need those. Uh, two ruby potions, okay, very nice. I got a scroll. Okay, um, here's a worm. So I'm going to back up and just throw some javelins at him. All right, so I just killed that worm with my javelins. That's why javelins are actually insanely good. They're base damage 10, which means if you do hit with them, they hit for a shitload, which is great. Uh, and for early enemies, it just means they die. Now, I raised up to level 5, okay? Um, I didn't get any attribute bonuses, but I went from 35 hit points to 41. So that's terrific. Remember, I am a human, um, and so humans are just average at everything, but they level up really, really fast. Uh, and leveling up is just great. Ooh, we got another ring. That's quite unusual, but quite awesome. Um, so I'm going to check out what this ring does. I'm going to use my potion of identify on this ring, and it's an uncursed ring of protection from fire. So that's great. I can actually use this, and now... Um, if I go to my paper doll, you'll see I have two out of three resist fire, and the word resist fire here has kind of gotten into a more uh, vibrant color of green because I've the intensity has increased, and that's amazing. There's not that much stuff that's going to do fire damage to me right now, um, but if there was, I'm pretty damn good at resisting fire. Um, here's my religion screen by pushing shift six. Um... My title is Frenzied, and Trog likes me. Let's see. Um, I'm trying to figure out... I think there's a way to... Um, get information about your resistances, but I don't need that right now. I'm just running around. I picked up some money. And um, I, know, I apologize if it's like hard to process what's going on. Feel free when I upload this to YouTube um, to kind of like pause and slow down. But again, everything in this game, um, if you're using Auto Explore, like I think you should use uh, because it protects you the best. It immediately stops when there's any threat. If you're just moving around manually with the arrow keys, that's totally cool. But it overrides the fact that you see something dangerous. And so you could just be like, you know, in the zone or spaced out, not quite paying attention and see an enemy and get too close to it and not realize it. But if you're auto exploring, it will just stop. And you'll be like, oh, why did it stop? And then you look in the text window down here to see it. Now, the other thing is, if you look in this text window, Everything that I just picked up from auto exploring is listed here. So I got 84 gold pieces. I found a hunting sling. I got some more poison darts to add to my collection. So you miss nothing, all right? Now I got another scroll. Um, it's different than my previous scrolls. All right, at this point, I'm gonna go back up here to where I have a staircase that I can use because this is like my oh shit area. If anything happens, I can just go up the steps. Now, one thing I wanna point out, you see how this area here, this big box around me, is lighter than this area here and beyond? That is my current field of vision. The fog of war has been removed in these areas outside my field of vision, but all that does is tell me what's there map-wise. It, I can no longer see if there's enemies there. So like some enemy could wander in this area and don't get confused and think, oh, there's nobody around me. There could be a person right here like a you know a rat or a monster or something and then i can't see it until i move up and uncover that square again just something to be mindful of now i feel like i want to identify some of my scrolls at this point i feel like um i've got enough scrolls 
this pile of three is really interesting. What is this? So I'm gonna click on this, okay? And when I click on it, it says, um, you feel blessed for a moment. It was a scroll of remove curse. So now I know that this is remove curse and I have two copies of it. That's quite helpful, all right? Um, that's all I really wanted to do was just to see what that three pile was because if that three pile was something really good, then I would have two more copies of it to use right away to give myself a boost. All right, so this is a kind of a bit of a unlucky spot, but I pushed O to step in and that uncovered two monsters, two coal balls, and um, this guy got a shot on me. So I'm gonna back up into this corner. Um, remember, you can move just by clicking around if you want, or using the arrow keys, or using the letter keys. And I'm gonna move over here into my hallway of doom. I'm just gonna push F to throw my javelin. Boom, one shot that dude. Um, one damn hit was all it took um okay okay um we killed a rat trog accepts the kill i'm throwing stones now so i'm not really doing that much damage but i'm gonna swing my mace at this dude boom trog accepts my kill war is fantastic isn't it we just cleaned out all of these enemies let's chop them up and let's pick up our javelins again. I'm gonna start running around and just get some food. Here's another altar um, to Yredilmanol, blah, 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 blah. I can never pronounce these god names in this game. They're hilarious. I don't know if anyone can. Um, kudos to you if you can. If you know how to pronounce them, please post in the comments below or tell me. Um, anyway, this is like the undead god. Um, I'm not interested. Trog is my dude right now. I'm gonna fight this rat and just blow him up. Another scroll. A new scroll um, that I've never acquired before. It goes into its own stack. Every item that you get that's unique from itself um, will go into its own pile. So like this pile of two, these are both the same scroll. These are different ones. These are both the same potion. These both look kind of the same, but they're different. They're different types of potion. Okay. Um, I'm just going to drop this mace. I don't need it at all. Don't want it. Okay. I'm actually going to, at this point, drop my sling and drop my stones. If I run out of javelins to throw, I want to throw my poison darts instead. All right, adder's on me. Boom. Crushed him. Okay, you can see my armor skill went up to level three. Now, I think it's worth talking about skills for just another moment. Remember that all I'm actually training right now is my maces and flails and my armor. How did I do that, you might be asking? Um, you can toggle whether or not you want the game to automatically train skills for you. And what it will do is just look at your equipment, look at what skills you're using, and then select those skills and level them up. It's kind of interesting, but I think you want to take full control and do manual mode. All right. And then um, what you can do is you can push question mark. And now when you look at all the skills, it'll tell you what they do. So armor, for example. Um, it increases my AC gain by wearing heavy armor, and it also helps lessen the hindrance of heavy armor on melee combat, uh, uh, excuse me, melee combat and spellcasting, all right? So that's extremely important for me because I plan on going heavy armor. I want plate armor, crystal, you know, plate or dragon armor, something insanely good. Um, and so I want to go armor. That's very good for me. And after a while, you just start getting more armor class based on your armor, all right? So if you ever want to know what skills do, just click the, the help button um, and then, or quick question mark, and you can then look at them. And if you click help at any time, look, there's a full screen that explains skills for you. Also, don't forget to go to the wiki, go to the, you know, Reddit for this, um, the, the dungeon crawl subreddit, or, uh, and get information about this, or go to the message boards. Or PM me. Ask me. Ask me in the comments. 
like I said, I'm just a medium player at this, but I've been playing it uh, off and on for 15 years, so I have a uh, pretty working knowledge of most of the things in this game, especially if they're oriented towards melee types. All right, so I've cleared another floor of the dungeon. All right, it says done exploring in the bottom left there, um, and that means nowhere else for me to go except deeper into the dungeon. So deeper I will go. Boom, I'm going over here. I'm diving in. I go down, and now I'm on, uh, where am I in the dungeon? Can you tell me? Um, no. Nah. Let me see here. No, this is good. Okay, I think I'm on the... F yeah, dude, I'm on the fourth level of the main dungeon. All right, so... Ooh, okay, this is a great moment for all of us here. Uh, if you don't mind taking a gander, we found an ogre, all right? So an ogre is probably one of the first enemies that's not a named enemy that you will encounter that's a real pain in the ass that will end your adventure. Um, snakes can do it just with poison if you're not careful or don't have a potion. Uh, but ogres can do it in one hit. They have this huge club and they don't have good armor, but if they get a lick on you, um, it could just be game over for a squishier character. So you really need to be careful with these guys. He doesn't see me right now. Um, you can see in the text description it says he hasn't noticed me and that's why there's this question mark up by him so he doesn't even see me at all uh so i could like slowly back away if i wanted to but unfortunately i'm not very sneaky so he heard me and so he's like hey um i see you and so now he knows where i am and he's aware of me again remember i can just right click on this dude to get information about him if i'm curious okay um it looks extremely dangerous, right? That's what they're telling me about this guy. It can hit for up to 17 damage plus his club. So his strength is such that he's going to hit for 17 plus whatever the hell his giant club does. So that could either one or two shot me. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to throw. Throw. I hit him, and I hit him actually pretty good. It says he's heavily wounded. You can see his little health bar here um, below him throw again. I am almost killed him with just javelins, which is awesome. Um, but I'm not going to throw another one because I'm going to go berserk. And then I'm just going to bop him. Alright? So, I went berserk so that he didn't get a free hit on me when he got into range because, like I said, he could just get a lucky crit and I'm dead. He's dead. I win. Um, and so, you know, this, this ogre is, uh, is dead. But what I want you to notice is just the amount of experience you get, the training that you get from this dude. So when I killed this guy, in green, it tells you all the things that have advanced, benefited you. Um, and my maces and flail skill went up to five, which is terrific. And I went up a whole level. Um, I went up to level six. Um, I think with the human, every three levels, you get a, to choose a stat that you want to raise. Um, and so here's my attributes and I want to raise strength all day every day. I'm playing a melee cat person I want to beat the shit out of people and so I need strength to do that um, At least early on Okay, I'm still berserk by the way and so I'm gonna just kind of back away Back up here. You'll see that I'm extremely hungry. I'm just gonna wait wait. Okay, and now I, I'm not um, slow or have berserk fatigue I mean, i'm gonna chop up this ogre and eat him that's one of the great things about this game that i don't think enough people acknowledge which is that you get to just basically murder people and then eat them and i don't mean people um there are people in this but it's usually monsters um now i would never do that in real life that's repulsive i i can't even imagine that but it it is kind of humorous that you there's no other food source um and so what I will emphasize is you want to chop things up before the meat spoils and you want to eat meat that's um, temporary. 
you want to eat food that's temporary as often as you can. Now, I don't want to eat again. I can't really because I'm um, full. I can eat my rations whenever. It doesn't matter what my satiation level is. Um, but you want to eat these because they go bad. These never go bad. These are like emergency. Don't eat your bread unless it's, oh my God, I'm starving. Um, all right. So now let me take a look at my maces and flails. It's at five. Remember, if I um, click help on maces and flails, it tells you that um, it allows me to attack more quickly with all weapons of this type, as well as increasing my accuracy and damage with them. I mean, insane. Okay. Oh, and just one other little caveat. Um, I don't know if I... I mentioned this in an earlier video, but just as a refresher, you see the axes and staves are in green, and they've actually increased from zero, whereas, like, unarmed combat, for example, has not. Um, it's because these are, like, synergistic skills, and you get a little bit of knowledge of axes and staves by doing maces and flails, which is really useful, uh, because if you find, like, a pimp axe and you want to switch over, you won't be a complete noob uh, with axes. All right. I'm now ready to go back to exploring. Unfortunately, I can't use this guy's um, giant club because you have to be huge. If, if I was an ogre, if I started the game as an ogre, I could use this, but I can't. Its base damage is 20, which is astronomical, right? So he was doing 17. If he did 20 plus 17, um, I would almost be dead. So that's how damn it, like dangerous those guys can be. But I can't use it, so I move on. All right, there's a falcon. Okay, fine, whatever. I'm not interested in swords right now, though they're non-magical, so I pass it by. Okay. Um, oh, this is kind of cool. So... This is like a mini ecumenical temple. And when I say ecumenical temple, you might be like, what the hell are you keep meaning? The ecumenical temple is a branch of the dungeon that is usually around level six. Um, it's not always, though. It could be earlier. It could be later. It could be not at all. But it's usually around there. And inside, there are a wide variety of altars for you to choose from. Not all gods will be represented, but you can like find um you can make a better choice there about what god you want um but this is like a mini one because i there's um you know a couple of temples here so there's a uh snail covered altar and a radiant altar this um altar of vehement this is an awesome god to worship if you are uh a spellcaster and even if you're not there's some cool abilities that it gives you but i'm not interested i'm going trog um i ate another piece of my ogre flesh uh while i had the opportunity and you might ask why the hell did you do that and the answer is because i was hungry and i don't want to i want to seize the opportunity before this spoils because this is going to rot um and i won't be able to eat it anymore all right we got a hound skeleton no problem Okay, we got a dog coming at me, a jackal. Back into the corner, push S to let him come to me, and then bash him with tab until he dies. Another jackal. Back up. Tab, tab, tab. He's dead. Anybody else want anything? Nope. Okay. Cool. Oh. Little shadow imp in there. Oh, interesting. All right. Um, okay, lots of jackals. Again, I'm in an awesome little hallway here that will protect me. This is what you want to do. Get yourself in a hallway and fight enemies one at a time. This guy's coming. I'm going to throw my javelin. I'm going to bash him with my morning star, which I'm even better at. Okay. Um, now, here's the deal. This transporter here will probably take me into this room where I get a potion. However, I can't get out unless I go this way. Now, you see how these are translucent stone walls? That means I can see through them. So what I'm going to do is walk around this and see what the hell is in here. Okay, these are electric eels. Um, they can't hit me through the translucent wall. I'm protected through it. 
But if I were to have gone in there to get this potion, if I was like real greed bags, I was like, oh, give me the potion, I need it. Um, I would be in a spot where I'm getting blasted by electricity. Now, um, remember, right click on the enemy, see what the hell they do. Okay, he possesses the natural ability of electric bolt. Um, to read a description, press the key um, listed below. A. Okay. He throws a bolt of electricity with high accuracy, and he has a huge range. Okay. Let me tell you something about electricity. Electricity is a damage type that can do, like, zero damage, or it can do a shitload of damage. It can also bounce off walls and hit you a second time, all right? If I were to go in there, they would both be blasting me with electricity that could potentially be bouncing off the walls and hitting me. Um, and so... I don't have any resistance to electricity. I have no interest at all in attempting to go in here, okay? Um, I could go in here and, like, try to fight one of them or something like that. Like, go berserk and try to get on the guy and fight him. But then, maybe I kill him, but they're just blasting me in the meantime. And then if I tried to walk over to the next guy... I might fall out of Berserk, and then I'd be slow and exhausted, and he's just getting to blast away at me. Um, and so, no thank you, is basically my point, okay? Um, now, I'm not sure, um, like, if this teleports me here, or how these teleporters are connected or working, but... I'm going to tell you one thing. I've played enough Dungeon Crawl to know that I'm not risking it. I am not going in there. Um, now, this is a great talking point because... All right, that was really shitty of me. Um, I just let myself, thinking I could kill that snake easily, um, get into a situation where I'm now fighting two enemies. All right? Let me explain something to you very simply about Crawl. Crawl is a game... Where if you drop your guard at any time, you will die. If at any time you get overconfident and think, I'm the shit, my character is unbelievable, I'm going to win, the game will destroy you. You have to be humble and respect the game because it is extremely difficult. Alright? Even in that moment, like a little moment of complacency um, or just kind of taking your eyes off the prize can cost you hours of investment so don't let that be you all right now the other thing i want to mention is some of you guys might be more risky players and want to go in there and just see if you can make it because you know this wand of flame really um excites you a wand of flame is fine all right it's a good item but it's not worth this to me now if there was some kind of artifact sword or armor in there sure maybe or if this was a more powerful wand, maybe. But wand of flame? No, that's pretty mundane. My javelins are, you know, similar to that, uh, sort of. So I'm not gonna risk it. Pick up this ring. All right, now I no longer have a scroll of identify, so I can't figure out what this ring does. However, I do have a scroll of remove curse and two of them, so I can risk one to try to identify that. Let me show you the process. I'm going to click on my ring here to de-equip it, and I click on this ring to put it on, and it will identify it when I put it on. If it was a cursed item, I would just read my scroll of remove curse, it would let me then take it off, and I would put this ring back on and just throw this ring on the ground. Now, this is a ring of stealth. A ring of stealth is cool for a stealthy character, um, or perhaps for some situations where you need to sneak by some extremely difficult enemy to get something. I don't need this at all. I'm going to unequip this and put this back on. I'm a big, clunky dude wearing metal armor with a big metal spiked ball on the end of a stick. I'm not stealthy. I'm not trying to be stealthy. I'm not going to be stealthy. So I would rather have the other ring. All right. And now we have encountered a really hard asshole and that's another named guy Edmund he's extremely dangerous all right 
Here's his description, and he has a plus three flail of venom. What's that, you might ask? Um, it's an item that can poison me, all right? So I don't want to have anything to do with it. Now, I can't... I can run from this guy if I want. I have enough squares. Um, I've got two squares distance, and we move about the same speed, I believe. So I could run away from him if I wanted to, but I don't need to. I'm just going to throw a javelin at him, and I'm going to go berserk. And I'm going to keep hitting him until he dies, all right? Um, because... I have a Morning Star. I'm strong, and I have this skill, armor plus four. That combined with going berserk, I'm totally comfortable taking him. If there were more enemies, maybe not. And it could have gone south for sure, but I mean, that's a risk that I'm willing to take. Most of the things in this game are risks because the game is stacked against you, but you just have to balance which risks you take. Going in against those electric eels, not worth it. Fighting Sigmund in a safe corridor with Berserk? Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, and look what happened. My Mason Flails went up, my armor went up, and my um, level went up. You'll see that because my armor skill went up to level 4, I got an, my armor class also increased because now my armor skill is boosting how much armor I derive from wearing armor. So that's terrific. Um, now, Let's look at his equipment. He's got this Flail of Venom, okay? I'm gonna right click on it. Base damage, 10. And plus three Flail of Venom. For the time being, even though my Morningstar here has way better base damage, this having a plus three, having no minus to hit, and having a brand, um, brand meaning like a magical attribute that does some kind of status effect, elemental damage or something, this poisons people, all right? It says it poisons the flesh of those it strikes. Hell yeah, all of those things are good. This is an extremely good upgrade for me. Um, I'm going to wait, wait, until my poison wears off. I'm going to wait until my berserk wears off. It's worn off, I'm fully healed, and I am ready to go. I am going to stop here for the evening. I am tired, but I thank you so much for taking the time to stop by and watch please check me out um, on Twitch. I stream from 10 till around 1 um, weeknights, and I post the content then to YouTube after a little editing. Check me out on YouTube. Follow me on Twitter. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please follow me on Twitch. Ask me any questions at all about this game, and I would love to help you out. I think it's one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, it just has a really steep difficulty curve, but that's what keeps me coming back, is that it's so hard, it's very satisfying if you actually win. Um, and so I really want to help you get there if you've never won before. So please don't hesitate to message me, ask me anything, you know, uh, leave.